Today, finally, we get to talk about Space Force, the government's most recent plan to protect its citizens. We may have the most expensive per capita healthcare in the world, but I'll be damned if we're gonna let other countries start controlling uninhabitable planets. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? We, as a nation, have assets in space of, of incalculable value. And so when you think of what a military does, as a minimum, they would protect a nation's interest, a nation's assets. And space is another place. You have the ground, you have the air, and you have space. So it's not a, a weird idea to say we perhaps should have a space force. The assets we have in space aren't cheap, to the point where a Tesla might be the cheapest piece of tech in Earth's orbit right now. Aw oh man, I thought I could just riff my way through this episode. Turns out, maybe a good idea. We've got so many billions of dollars worth of satellites floating around, I'm surprised our night sky doesn't look like a strobe light. So what's protecting them right now? It has to be more than the fact that every other country with missile technology is totally fine with our stuff drifting over their heads every once in a while. I mean, in 2007 we saw... Low Earth orbit satellites have become indispensable for the U.S. military for communications, for GPS navigation to guide smart bombs and troops, and for real-time surveillance. But they are also extremely vulnerable, as a just-revealed test of a satellite-killing weapon by China ominously demonstrates. Okay, well, that's not great. But don't worry, we have that tech too. But how can we have that tech to protect our space assets without having Space Force? Turns out that despite the fact that there's no air in space, there's definitely an air force. But the Pentagon is already tracking that threat and has a space command under the air force with 30,000 personnel working to keep our space assets safe. But President Trump wants that to be its own new force and the Pentagon is requesting another $8 billion to do it, Amy. Wow, $8 billion? That's two thirds of what we just used to bail out soybean farmers. That might not even be enough to fake a moon landing. Are we making the Chinatown bus equivalent to the Apollo program? Again, no, because we aren't building this force from the bottom up. Instead, we're just transitioning those 30,000 Air Force people currently working in space defense to their own program. In fact, we've done something like this before. You might remember, no, you wouldn't remember, but you might have read that during the Second World War, the Army had a branch of itself called the Army Air Force. And once we learned that this theater of operations, this sphere of operations, had fundamentally different needs, different training, different technologies, uh, different personnel required to operate in that, in that space, if you will, uh, the Air Force then uh, split away from the army and became its own branch. So the question really is, is defending space different enough from flying planes to justify its own branch of the military? I mean, I know it's specialized, but it's not rocket science. Well, you see what the bind I'm in because I so badly want to say, we already have NASA. We don't need Space Force. Please wait until NASA finds life before you try to kill it. But like, yeah, that's just not how this works. Man, why does there have to be nuance? Don't worry though, guys, there is plenty of fun to be had with this issue, because Trump is handling the separation of Air Force and Space Force in, well, possibly the most Trump way possible. They've already started working on a logo for merchandise. Uh, they sure have. The Trump campaign is working on logos. No sooner did Vice President Pence roll out the plans for a Space Force than the campaign reached out to supporters to choose their favorite Space Force logo. The intention to sell merchandise to support Trump Pence in 2020. Wow, okay. So that's a thing. We're doing this for the merch? And I thought doing this to distract from the Mueller investigation was a dumb reason. So all this certainly doesn't dampen the impact of this Space Force. It's like finding out that the Cuban Revolution happened to push those Che Guevara t-shirts. We're fighting against consumerism so that one day people fed up with consumerism will know exactly which overpriced shirts to buy. So this Space Force might not have the pure intentions we're used to with Donald Trump, but that doesn't mean it's not a good idea. 
I want to look a little bit deeper into this new sixth branch of the military to see what their actual goals are. Well, luckily for us, there's a report. Although, leave it up to Mike Pence to find a way to make Space Force sound boring. So let's dive into final report on organizational and management structure for the national security space components of the Department of Defense. <laughs> yeah, sorry Pence, but there is no way Trump is letting you do anything to the Space Force branding. Well, I like the patch that says Mars awaits, but wouldn't it be just as exciting to mention synergistic management solutions? Well, this proposal goes over four sections of the Space Force. The Space Development Agency, Space Operations Force, Service and Support, and Space Command. All designed to get this relatively large part of the Air Force and turn it into... We must have American dominance in space. Spoiler alert if you think this is actually only going to cost $8 billion. Well, it is not. A major part of this proposal relies on the President's fiscal year 2020 budget will be sent to Congress in February 2019. Any costs associated with the establishment of the Space Force will be outlined. Well, I'm glad we don't estimate those costs in the proposal. Could you imagine how bad it would be if we could understand how expensive something is before actually voting on it? So first, we're starting simple with the creation of the Space Development Agency from the Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center. And this whole part sounds like a management consultant speaking in tongues. I mean, this department will streamline current operations to focus on execution, and encourage bold breakthroughs designed to obsolesce our competitors, and do a lot more to encourage innovation. Which leads to the question, what were we doing before? Alright boys, we're the Air Force Space Program and damn it, we're going to focus on inconsequential and altogether inefficient innovations. Johnson, how is that product to develop a lunar rover powered by burning hundred dollar bills going? There is a new emphasis on identifying opportunities to move from dependence on a few independent assets to a proliferated architecture enabled by low-cost commercial space technology, which is basically use of private sector innovations to boost our space program. You know, like... That's when SpaceX performed the latest test flight of their reusable rocket in rural Texas. But don't worry if you don't like that plan, because the next line directly contradicts it, saying that the department will shift from an acquisition organization and mindset to a development organization focused on experimentation, prototyping, and accelerated fielding. Yeah, we can't have a culture of, oh, we'll just acquire other people's technology. We need to be doing our own researching and experimenting. So then we get to the second department, Space Operations Force where things tend to get a little more Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Dig in! They're inserting reinforcements! Drive them back! Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's my kind of Space Force! Well, not quite that. This would see the development of Space Operations Force. This is similar to Special Operations Force's personnel provided by all military services. The Space Operations Force will be composed of the space personnel from all military services, but developed and managed as one community. Hell yeah, Space Black Ops! This would basically fast track a path for people who want to go to space to get the abilities in order to get specialization earlier on in one's career. Now, I'm not going to say astronauts with guns quite yet, but there is the goal of scaling over time to support continuous rotational presence at combatant commands, and growing the number and quality of space-rated personnel to meet with warfighting needs of the US Space Command and other combatant commands. And wow, we're saying the word combatant a lot more than I was expecting. It does say its goal in this stage is to develop the world's best space operations, intelligence, engineering, science, and present them to combat command. So that's less violent. I don't want to misrepresent this division, so here's the Air Force describing what space air operations is currently. Space operations is a broad field. We provide a lot of things that warfighters depend on. Things like precision navigation and timing via the global positioning system. We provide satellite communications worldwide. We provide missile warning for folks who are in harm's way. We provide uh, weather. 
and a lot of things that folks rely on to make them better at what they do. Well, that's a lot less robots and machine guns than I was expecting. You can't compare a department of special operators in your proposal when it's more like an intergalactic geek squad. Before we go on, some of the things that this group does obviously are really important, like... So particularly here we are setting up with a global positioning system jammer to help our folks uh, learn what that feels like to be able to experience someone trying to interfere with their global positioning system. You're in the middle of the desert. If you want to give someone the experience of complete signal loss, just get them a T-Mobile phone. Save a ton of money. I'd say that having these specialists in space to support our GPS and other surveillance satellites is probably pretty important. Considering if I don't have GPS, well, my life would completely lack direction. So not a service that's in support, where you can pretty clearly see no thought went into it. The layout of this entire department is summed up in less than a page and basically says, yeah, we'll also need recruiting, legal, financial, mana. Yeah, no one was being called the Spec Ops Team of Finance. I think the only reason they bullet pointed this section was, and if they made it a sentence like clearly it was at one point, this entire section wouldn't have even been a paragraph. So basically it says, don't worry. We're gonna get the best people in the world. Now to the final department. We have US Space Command. And there aren't really any surprises here. It's just the leadership of Space Force. They coordinate with our allies, plan our trajectory, and make sure that Space Development Agency actually focuses on bold innovations. The shinier the better. So the question now is, do we want... We are going to have the Air Force and we are going to have the Space Force. Separate but equal. He really has a way with words. Weird way of putting that, but you get the idea. Or do we want to keep space defense as part of the Air Force? The biggest advantage to Trump's idea would be the ability to focus more on space problems, which I imagine are quite different from air problems, and streamline research and recruitment. Also, more astronauts, and who doesn't want to be an astronaut? The US has a ton more satellites than any other country, and almost more than any other country combined. So some would argue that our strength in that area needs protecting. Especially because, probably seeing the writing on the wall about not being able to launch as much stuff into space as us, China switched their strategy to knocking out equipment. Basically, it would be like shooting fish in a barrel. Except, actually, I can't predict the fish's complete course days ahead of time. I wish I could give you more exact costs, but that part hasn't been published yet, as I said earlier. The best I can leave you with is... In our most recent budget, we spent $116 billion on the Army, $180 on the Navy and Marine Corps combined, $183 on the Air Force, and $110 on Defense-wide, which I assume covers the Coast Guard. All this to say, judging by the other branches of the military's funding, this might not be cheap. But I've heard space travel has gotten quite a bit more affordable these days. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Remember to ring that bell, and as always give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching.